Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be looking at parallel, perpendicular, and skew lines, and then we're going to be looking at uh, classifying various types of angles when two lines are um, cut by a transversal. So first off, all of these terms are ones that you are probably well familiar with by now. Um, parallel, perpendicular, skew, etc. Skew is my, something that you might not be as familiar with, but we'll get into that. So parallel, first off, right off the bat, parallel, plain and simply, there are two lines that go in the same direction. They never touch. And they remain what are called equidistant. And I'm going to go ahead and just write that over here for a moment. Equidistant, and I'm not confident in that spelling. You're going to have to check me on that. But equidistant means lines don't get closer or farther away. So I'll give you an example. E to G and F to H down here. All right. E to G and F to H. They're going in the same direction, certainly. In fact, they have these two little arrow markers to indicate that they are indeed parallel to each other. So if I want to go ahead and label a couple angles, I can say EG is parallel to FH. And I'm going to go ahead and put the arrow symbols on either side of that. This one that kind of looks like an equal sign upside or on its um, 90 degree turned is a parallel sign. It means two lines are parallel to one another. The equal sign is actually a derivative of the parallel sign because at one point in time, I forget what mathematician was, but a mathematician said there's nothing more equal than two parallel lines. And they're absolutely right. There is really nothing more equal than two parallel lines. They're going in the same direction. They have the same slope. So an equal sign as well, just two parallel lines. Uh, we need to make sure that we are looking for the parallel symbol. That's the arrows in the middle of the line to indicate that they're parallel. Granted, there are a few other parallel lines, but you don't want to make assumptions generally in math. That there are several. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect at 90 degrees. And the symbol that we're going to use for that is going to look like an upside down capital T. You're going to see that box symbol. I've got a box symbol down here. I'd say that EG and GH are perpendicular to each other. So I'd say EG is perpendicular with a symbol like that to GH. Segment EG, segment GH, or if you want to put on the arrows, they're perpendicular to each other. Now the next term skew is one that you may have seen before, you may not have seen. Skew lines, they're, they're the ones that people often, often have not seen in the past. Skew lines are ones that are not parallel and at the same time they are they don't intersect. Now you might ask yourself, well how are two lines not parallel and they don't intersect? Well look at this. If we have a line right here, AE, and we have a line, let's say, sitting in the back, B down to D. This line up here, it's going off into the distance. This line is going straight up and down. They're never going to intersect each other. And I'm not saying that there's an intersection right here because this, this line, the way it's drawn, it's, it's way back farther. It's, it's back behind the blue line. It's going to go way back farther. And then the blue line is in front of it shooting backwards. So we'd say that those two are skew lines. There's not a formal um, symbol for skew line, so I'm going to simply write AE is skew skew two. Then I would write BD. Those are not the only skew lines in our diagram. Um, there are many more skew lines, skew segments in our diagram, but that's just an example. Another example might be. Um, let's say this back line right here going straight up and down and this line over here. They're not parallel. They're not going to intersect each other. They're skew. Last thing is parallel planes. They're, they're when planes are parallel and I don't think there needs to be a formal definition for that, but that'd be like AEF. Remember we name parallel lines with 
three letters, so AEF is parallel, that's the top plane, is parallel to CGH. All right, that'd be this whole top plane up top is parallel to the bottom plane. The other thing that we're going to look into um, this lesson here is corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior, and um, same side interior angles. When two lines are cut by a transversal, so I've got one line, two lines, and they're being cut by a transversal. In other words, a transversal is a line that goes over other lines. There are several pairs of angles that you can have. We've already talked about a few, just so just to review, if we have two angles like that, I would say that these are a linear pair. We've also talked about vertical angles. So if we have an angle like that, an angle like that, and opposite sides of an X, we call these vertical angles. But there are several other pairs as well. I'll give you an example. The corresponding angles. Corresponding angles, this is a term you're going to need to know. Corresponding angles are angles that are essentially in the same position given these two quads. And here's what I mean. Two right here, do you see that that's in the top right of these four angles? One, two, three, and four. Two is in the top right. Six is in the top right of these four angles. So I'd say that angle two and angle four are corresponding, or excuse me, angle six are corresponding to each other. Same thing with one and angle five. I see that angle one up here, angle five down here, on the top left, on the top left, they're corresponding to each other. The last couple might be, let's say, eight and four, and three and seven. Angle eight and four, and then angle three, angle seven would all be corresponding to one another. Alternate interiors, on the other hand, alternate interiors are two ones that are essentially in opposite corners of each other. Four and five are alternate interiors. Three and six are alternate interiors, and they're specifically interiors because they're in the interior. All this stuff is the interior. So again, angle three, angle six, and then if I switch over to blue, angle four, angle five are alternate interiors. We also have alternate exteriors. Alternate exteriors now, I'm going to highlight that in green, alternate exteriors are going to be things like three and eight. They're about as far apart as they can get. They're both in the exterior. They're on opposite sides of the transversal. They're alternate exteriors. So angle one and angle eight are alternate exteriors. And you can guess the other pair. Yup, angle two, angle seven are going to be alternate exterior angles. Very last type that we're going to look at, same side interior angles. That's going to be like four and six are same side interiors or three and five are same side interiors. They're on the same side of the transversal. Transversal again is this line T. They're on the same side of the transversal and they're in the interior. So I'd say four and six, or you could say angle three, angle five are, are same side interior angles. Sometimes we have diagrams where we have multiple transversals. If we look at this diagram, check that out. There, this line M here is going over line N, line N is going over line L. They're all going over each other, right? They're all going over each other. So they're all transversals at different times. If I give you two angles, like angle one and angle three, well, let's identify those, angle one and angle three. I would say that the transversal for those two is the line that goes through both. All right, so it looks like L right here is going through both of them. Line L is the transversal. And then let's ignore absolutely everything else down here. If we want to identify the interior, that's going to be, here's two lines that are being cut. Interior is anything on the inside. So one's in the interior, one's in the exterior. I see that one is on the bottom left of these four and three is in the bottom left of these four, they're going to be corresponding then. Mm -hmm. 
What I'd like you to do for a moment is pause the video, try to identify for two and six what type they are, and for four and six what type they are, and I'll give the answer in half a moment. All right, two and six, because two and six are both cut by line in, we say that the transversal is line in, and then the type two and six, let's say they are here and here, they are both in the interior of the lines that are being cut, so they are alternate interior. On the other hand, if we have four and six, four and six are right there and right there respectively, we can ignore all this. Interior is going to be anything on the inside here. So they're both in the exterior this time. I would say that the transversal is M, and the type, they are both alternate exterior. Now notice six was alternate exterior once, alternate interior once, that's totally fine. Sometimes an angle's in the interior, sometimes an angle's in the exterior. It really depends on what two lines are being cut. If you have any questions, please email me, let me know. Otherwise, have a delightful day. Take care.